ग्रेविटेशन इज द फिनोमिना ऑफ इंटरेक्शन बिटवीन आई रिपीट ग्रेविटेशन इज द फिनोमिना ऑफ इंटरेक्शन बिटवीन सो वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट ग्रेविटेशन नाउ लेट मी टेल यू समथिंग रियली इंटरेस्टिंग एनी टू ऑब्जेक्ट इफ दे हैव दिस थिंग कॉल्ड मास दे अट्रैक्ट इच अदर वाई डू दे अट्रैक्ट इच अदर वेल दैट्स काइंड ऑफ अ मिस्ट्री बट दे डू अट्रैक्ट इच अदर and this attractive force is given a name gravitational force so gravitation is the phenomena of interaction between any two masses now let's read the options option a says point masses only well if we have two point masses gravitational force will act between them but what about larger masses well larger objects are also made of point masses so If two point masses attract each other, larger objects will also attract each other, and the attractive force between them, by the virtue of their masses, is called gravitational force. So it is not only restricted to point masses. So we won't pick option A as the answer. Now, option B, any arbitrary shaped masses. Yes. if we have two objects which have masses gravitational force will act between them so option b is correct option c planets only well gravitational force do act between planets but not only between planets i will give you an example the the mobile or tablet in front of you and your nose both have masses so gravitational force is acting between these two objects although that force might not be that much noticeable so we can say gravitational force acts between any two masses not only between planets so option c we won't pick that and option d none of these we won't pick that also so option b any arbitrary shaped masses is the right answer for our question two bodies of masses m1 equal to 5 kg and m2 equal to 10 kg are placed on the x axis 2 meters apart so we can see the two objects one is of 5 kg and another object is of 10 kg mass if origin has to be taken on mass m1 then the gravitational force on mass m2 is so what do we have to find we have to find the gravitational force on mass m2 gravitational force on mass m2 f vector now you know force is a vector quantity and any vector quantity must have some magnitude as well as direction good good let's see the direction of force on m2 can you guess the direction you will say yes so what is the direction the direction of gravitational force on mass m2 is towards mass m1 remember force of gravity is attractive in nature so this is the force on mass m2 it is towards the origin now we know the unit vector along the positive x axis is i cap and this direction is opposite it is towards the origin so the unit vector along this direction will be minus i cap can you see that yes so the direction we already know let's talk about the magnitude the magnitude is very simple we remember the formula the formula is g m1 m2 upon r square good let's put the values so when we put the values we get g times what is m1 5 what is m2 10 we divide it by r square r is 2 meter so 2 square we put now the direction we have uh, known the direction it is minus i cap and when we evaluate the force is coming out to be minus 25 g by 2 i cap good nice can you see that in the options yes option b option b is the right answer for our question many identical point masses small m each 
are placed along the x axis at wonderful locations let me give you the wonderful locations x equal to 0 x equal to 1 x equal to 2, x equal to 4, x equal to 8, x equal to 16, and so on and on. The magnitude of gravitational force on mass placed at origin x equal to 0 will be. Now, all the masses uh, which are placed on the positive x-axis, that is at x equal to 1, x equal to 2, x equal to 4, x equal to 8, x equal to 16, and so on, all these masses will pull the mass placed at origin along the positive x direction. Can you see that? Yes. So the question is, find the total force on the object on the point mass placed at origin. So we have to find the total force on the mass placed at origin. This is the question. Got the question? Yes. Now, how do we solve it? Well, very uh, simply, we can say the force, the net force is the sum of all the forces. All the forces are along the positive x direction, so we can add the magnitude directly. Now, what do we consider? We will consider each pair individually. So this is our first pair, x equal to 0 and x equal to 1. What is the distance between them? 1 meter. So the gravitational force is gm times m, that is gm square divided by 1 square. Now we have the second pair, x equal to 0 and x equal to 2. So gm square divided by 2 square is the gravitational force. And then we have gm square by 4 square, then we have gm square by 8 square, and so on and on. Now you will say there are infinite masses. Yes, there are infinite masses. So won't there be infinite force? No, that's not necessary. Let's see what are we getting from this series. So let's take gm square as common. Now we have 1 plus 1 upon 2 square plus 1 upon 4 square plus 1 upon 8 square and so on and on. This is our series. So this will give us the net force. Let me write it again. Let me rewrite it. So F is equals to gm square 1 plus 1 upon 2 square plus 1 upon 4 square plus 1 upon 8 square plus 1 upon 16 square and so on and on. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Now what can we say about it? Well, let me write it in a different style. So we have 1 plus 1 upon 2 square and then we have 1 upon, now 4 can be written as 2 square. So we have 2 square. As we had 4 square, we will put whole square outside it. And then we had 1 upon 8 square. Now 8 is nothing but 2 cube. So 1 upon 2 cube. And then as we had 8 square, I will put square outside it. And then we had 1 upon 16 whole square. 16 is nothing but 2 raised to power 4. As we had 16 square, we will put whole square outside it. And this will continue on and on. Now, there is something interesting. What we will do, we will interchange something. What is inside the bracket and what is outside the bracket. So we have 2 square, 2 is inside the bracket and 1, 2 is outside the bracket. 2 square, square. So even if we interchange these, uh, it won't make a difference. Now let's see right over here. 2 cube whole square. Now 3 is inside the bracket and 2 is outside the bracket. So what is outside the bracket, we will bring that inside the bracket and what was inside the bracket, we will take that outside the bracket. This won't make a difference. And then we have 1 upon 2 raised to power 4 whole square. Now 2 is uh, outside the bracket whole square. So 2 is outside the bracket and 4 is inside the bracket. So we will interchange them. So 2 square whole raised to power 4 and so on and on. Now let's find the sum. We have a geometrical progression right over here. What is GP? What do we mean by GP, geometrical progression? 
Well, there are many terms if they are in order a, a times r, a times r square, a times r cube, and so on and on, and so on and on. This is geometrical progression and we can find the sum of GP. So we have to add everything up to get the sum of GP. So when we add everything up, we get the total sum as a divided by r minus 1 minus r. a divided by 1 minus r. Usually r is uh, less than 1. So we get a finite positive sum of a GP. Nice? Nice. Now what we will do, we will find out what was a and what is r. So our GP is looking like this, gm square. Now you can see this is 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 square plus 1 upon 4 cube plus 1 upon 4 raised to power 4 and so on. Can you notice what is the value of r? What is r? Come on, tell me what is r? r is nothing but 1 by 4. What is a? Can you tell me what is a? Yes, a is nothing but 1. Amazing. So, the net force, the net force is coming out to be g m square a divided by 1 minus r. So, 1 divided by 1 minus 1 by 4. Hmm. So, this thing can be written as g m square times 4 by 3. So, 4 g m square by 3 is the answer. 4 g m square by 3. And we can see 4 gm square by 3 option B is the correct answer for this amazing question. Three equal masses, 1 kg each, are placed on the vertices of an equilateral triangle PQR and a mass of 2 kg is placed at the centroid O of the triangle. So we have an equilateral triangle on the vertices of this triangle. We have three equal masses of 1 kg each. And at the centroid, a very special mass 2 kg is placed. Now it is said that the centroid O of the triangle is at a distance of root 2 meter from each of the vertices of the triangle. So this distance is root 2. This distance is root 2 and this distance is root 2. Amazing. Now the net force acting on the mass 2 kg is. So on 2 kg, what is the net gravitational force? Now we can say due to mass at P, the gravitational force on 2 kg is in this direction. And due to mass at Q, the gravitational force is in this direction and due to uh, mass at R, gravitational force is in this direction. Now these forces are in different different direction but the magnitude is same. Can we find out the magnitude? Yes, very easily. See, the magnitude is G, first mass is 1 kg and the second mass is 2 kg, okay? So, g times 1 times 2 divided by distance square. What is the distance? Distance is root 2. So, root 2 square. So, the force is coming out to be g. Now, all the three forces have equal magnitude g. And the directions are different. Now, whenever we have three forces, whenever we have three forces acting at 120 degree each and the magnitudes of these forces are equal then we can say the net force is zero. First of all let me show you as everything is symmetric the angle between these three forces is 120 degree each. Why? Because the total angle is 360 so we can divide it into three equal parts. As everything is symmetric, each and every angle will come out to be 120 degree. Okay, nice. Now, why the sum is zero? Well, you can just uh, uh, remove these forces and play around with them. You can take this uh, 
special force right over here on the top. So we join the tail of this force on the head of another force. Okay, good. Now we will take this force and shift it. So uh, the tail of this force is joined on the head of another force. Now we will add all the three forces and we can see that they come out to be equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Null vector. Yes, exactly. So what do we get? We get the answer option D zero as the net force on the particle at the center and option D is the right answer for our question. The radius of earth is about 6400 kilometers and that of the Mars is 3200 kilometers. So this question is on two sister planets. We can see earth is a big sister. So the radius of the earth we can see uh, radius of the earth is twice the radius of Mars. Good. Earth is a big sister and also a fat sister because the mass of the earth is about 10 times the mass of Mars. So mass of earth is 10 times the mass of Mars. This is given in the question. Now, if an object weighs 200 newtons on the surface of the earth, its weight on the surface of Mars will be. So let's say we have a really heavy hat and we place it on the surface of the earth. The weight comes out to be 200 Newton. 200 Newton is the weight W. And when the same hat is placed on the surface of the Mars, the weight is W dash. We have to find what is the value of W dash. This is the question. Got it? We have to find the weight of this object on the surface of the Mars. Now, let's see. What is weight exactly? What do we mean by weight? Well, weight, you will say, is the normal reaction exerted by the surface. All right. So if an object is on the surface of the Earth, there will be normal reaction exerted by the surface of the Earth. And that normal reaction will be equal to the gravitational force applied on that object by the Earth. All right. So we can say weight will be equal to gravitational force. Hmm. Good. Now, let's talk about the gravitational force on the surface of the Earth. How to find that? Well, there is an easy way out. The Let's say the mass of the hat is small m hat and the mass of the Earth is capital M Earth. Good. Now we know the masses and we also know the radius of the Earth. So from the center to the surface, the distance is radius of the earth. Now using these, we can say the weight of the object, weight of the object uh, or the gravitational force on the object, we have talked about that, will be equal to g mass of hat times mass of earth divided by radius of earth whole square. Okay, yes, this is how we find the weight on the surface of a planet. Now let's talk about Mars. The new weight is W dash. Now we have G times the mass of hat is same. We haven't changed the hat. Mass of the hat times. Now the mass of Mars is different. So we will write mass of Mars. And we divide this by radius of Mars whole square. So we have radius of Mars whole square. Good. We have these two equations. Now the weight of the hat on the surface of the earth is given. It is given to be 200 Newtons. Let's divide these two equations. G and mass of hat will get cancelled out. So we have 200 divided by W dash. This is nothing but mass of Earth divided by mass of Mars. And then we have something about radius and whole square. So we have radius uh, of Mars divided by radius of Earth. And then we have whole square. 
Now this thing can be written in different style. We know mass of earth is 10 times mass of Mars. So we have 10 over here. Now radius, what is the relation between radius? We can see that radius of earth is twice the radius of Mars. So we can write 1 by 2 whole square. This gives us uh, 10 by 4. Now weight W dash on the surface of Mars is nothing but uh, uh, 4 times 200 divided by 10. This means 80. 80 Newton. Wow! So 80 Newton is the weight on the surface of the Mars. That is incredible. And we can mark option C, 80 Newton, as the right answer for this question. Now suppose, suppose you have a fat baby at your home and his weight is about 20 kg weight. Okay, he doesn't exercise, he eats a lot of chips and everything. So his weight is 20 kg weight. Uh, now, if you take the baby on the surface of the Mars, what do you think will be his weight? His weight will be 8 kg weight. Okay, this is the same question. 20 kg weight means 200 Newton. And 8 kg weight means 80 Newton. Got it? So you can lose your weight and baby's weight uh, if you go to different planets. You don't need to exercise anything. 